Hello Lolas. <laughs> so today I have Gianna here, which is my Gigi. And I am actually going to do, it's not necessarily a tag, but it was a question that Yarlina's uh, Reborn Nursery had um, asked. And I wanted to, you know, do a video. Sometimes if I have a very long response and it sounds like something that's almost can be a tag, I might do it. I don't, I'm not a really tag person, so. But every now and then, you know, it's like, okay. Um, so, this one was, how has, have, have your collecting style changed? Um, or how has it changed? I will write the correct question <laughs> in the um, title and I will probably have a link to get you to her channel at the end of this video. So first I want to say that I think mm, the way that I collect has not changed and let me explain. The way that I collect has not changed because I have almost always try to get the most bang for my buck <laughs> so basically my whole thing is i want to get as much as i can get for what my budget is so if my budget is 500 dollars, i want the most realistic you know high quality you know nicely done easy transaction doll that i can buy for 500 dollars so whatever is in that category, I want the best of the that that category for my $500. I want to have every feature that I want as many as I can get in that for that $500. And as that budget goes up, same difference. Um I, my budget definitely changed from when I started out collecting from spending $100, 100 and something dollars for my first doll on up, well actually my very first doll was $50, 50 something dollars because it was a um, little mini silicone by Lorna Miller Sands. And then my first reborn was, uh, and it was, that was a partial like cloth body type doll. Um, and then my, my second doll, which was my first reborn was Walter by Laura Tudor Ross. Um, so my, the way I like to collect never change, but the difference in the type of babies that I like and the sculpting that I like began to change over time. Um, gosh, it's hard for me to think back to the very beginning of where I started as far as sleeping awake, which one I liked first. I can't really remember offhand. I would have to go back and look at my videos um, because that has been up and down until the point now where I realize that um, it just depends on the sculpt itself. I'm naturally drawn to sleepers because sleepers in most cases look more realistic than the awake babies. I find a lot of awake babies look a lot dolly. A lot of times or the eyes look very cheap or something and I just don't have an interest and the bigger babies that are awake tend to have like very dolly looking limbs and stuff like that so it's very hard for me to fall for a bigger sculpt um, so with that being said I have went to where I'm like all asleep to like I like awake. I did realize that at some point I realized that even though I'm naturally drawn to asleep babies and I prefer to actually paint asleep babies um, and remember I, I wasn't always painting either. I was solely a collector. Um, I realized too that um, I tend to be more active, like want to interact more with the awake babies when I do have a awake baby. It's something about them that just make you like want to dress them, want to do role play videos with them because I guess because they're awake. Sleep babies, I just want to let them sleep. I just want to watch them and just look at them. So um, 
I did realize that over time, something that I, in the beginning, I did not want big babies at all. Like I did not want any big babies, anything to do with big babies. And then there was a time I was like, oh, I want to try a toddler or a bigger baby. And I thought, uh, it's not for me. And so I went back to just straight, you know, my babies, smaller babies, newborns, maybe zero to three month but now i realize that i like a variety of sizes i do like a few toddlers they take up a lot of space so i'm not really into them as much as i probably would if i there was a lot of them that was really really realistic looking and different um you know because when you go to looking at like the ping law babies i like the way they are made as far as like the movement and all that and stuff but they like most of them have almost the same limbs so that gets boring over time um so i'm pretty much newborn zero to three um three to six months is usually like my you know biggest baby that i really really enjoy um and then i occasionally might have a toddler another thing is i did not like preemies um, when I first started, I did not like preemies and it wasn't until I had a preemie silicone baby until I was like, Oh, I like this. They're so sweet. And then I was like, but I didn't like them in reborns. But then I found a reborn that I liked as a preemie. And so I do like preemies too now. And that's something I didn't like. Um, Let's see. I always have a lot of texture on my babies. That's been from day one. I... I'm trying to think. I don't think much else have changed. I've always liked the same style of babies. Um, some stuff. You know, yeah. I don't think... I think I've always liked... Like ultra realism, I always liked babies that have bruises and bumps and you know whatever rashes or whatever. I've always liked the the hyper realistic babies. I have not always been able to afford to get the ones that's like that, but yeah. Um, the other thing is when I first started painting, I did not really collect my own work like that I really pretty much I was painting for a while and just kind of practicing and then eventually I sold off like all my practice work for very low and then as I started to get a little bit better then I just started selling my work but I wasn't feeling like it was on the level of where in which I was accustomed to collecting from other artists so I always sold my work lower so it's not like I was like oh it's not good enough for me but I'll sell it it was like okay this might be for someone else that might be starting out and want cheaper reborns because I was developing my skills and I sold them so but then I started to like my own work and so now I collect more of my own work than other artists work but I still enjoy other artists' work because, oh my God, it's like so many amazing artists out here. But I often cannot get the babies from the other artists as easily. And especially, you know, now a lot of stuff, you know, prices have changed. The world is crazy right now. So shipping is even worse than ever. And I've never been big on like buying from overseas because I've never liked the shipping process because I'm... I'm I just panic so and it's even worse now so um yeah so that's another thing that slows me down with collecting um you know other artists work but that's you know that's the biggest difference since I started painting and collecting that has impacted the way I collect um also um I have readjusted my budget and what I'm willing to spend versus how I used to in the past. Another thing is I was 
more about getting like the most elite doll or what the community would consider the most elite doll back in the day and I was willing to spend whatever it took to get it. Now I am not into that. I prefer to, you know, keep my budget at a at a minimum of a, you know, the lower average cost for um like my silicone babies and stuff like that. So I actually like being able to have that financial freedom to buy, you know, another baby versus being just like all my money like synced into that one baby. And sometimes, you know, because you really didn't spend that much money, you have to make yourself feel like that baby is everything, even if it's not, because you spent this much money, you better like it. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like your mom putting the food in front of your your you know your plate in front of your face and say, "Don't get up from this table till you finish that food," because it's it's kids starving somewhere. You know, so it, it, that was my thing. It's like, okay, I spent all this money for this baby, I better like it type thing. Um, also, I'm a little bit more reluctant to like sell babies that I'm really really in love with to buy another baby that I think I might like better because in the past I was quick to do that and a lot of times the baby that was the replacement was not better than the one that I sold and that always kind of you know bothered me but I never really talked about it or you know spoke about it you know I just went with the flow you know here's a new baby oh great I'm so excited I'm glad you know to have and you do it's new you know, it's something about the rush of a box opening, getting a new baby, seeing a new face. You know, it's fresh, but once the, the excitement settle down and you really, like, look back and then you start to be like, oh, but I really like this or that on, you know, that baby. So, yeah. So, and I'm I'm also more willing to try different sculptors uh dolls now that i in the past i was kind of like set if i didn't like majority of a sculptor's work or something like that i was just like eh. even if i saw a face and i'm like ah, that face look cute you know um i would still not take a chance on it because i just was set on i i like this sculptor this sculptor and this sculptor that's it <laughs> now i'm like Okay, let me see what this one look like in person. You know, I'm, I I will order a blank kit super fast now compared to in the past just to see it. If I don't like it, I'm like, okay, if I don't particularly like the scope, I will paint it and, you know, sell it or sell the blank, sell it blank. So that's where I'm at. And I would love to hear, you know, how your collecting style has changed, how your, you know, mindset has changed, your perspective of collecting. Um, and that's that. I, um, I will say, and then the other thing is I've always collected, like I've, I've, I've collect from, you know, new artists, uh, master artists. I've collected boo-boo babies. I've collected, you know, very rare, one of the kinds, um, babies that people may consider least popular. In fact, a lot of my babies were uh, not like something that's mainstream, like everybody is chasing behind. Um, I actually like that and I still like that now, but you know, it's so, right now, it's so rare to find you know, kits that's limited or sold out editions, like that is long gone. Like it's like mostly everybody is doing like open editions and they're gonna, you know, sell a hundred of them before they stop, you know, producing it. So um having a rare and unique sold out sculpt these days is like you know, very few and far in between. Um, I know some some sculptors are starting to go back to the smaller editions and I appreciate it so much. 
Um, the only thing, like Cassie Bray, she she's doing a lot of them mainly. That's the first name to pop up. Um, she's doing the small editions, but she's like putting out babies every every Friday. <laughs> Not really, but you know what I mean? Um, it's like, it, it, and so it kind of like, you know, it's like a catch 22. And I'm thinking maybe she feels she has to do that to, you know, be able to um, balance, offset having small editions versus open editions. So maybe that's what she feels she needs to do for her financial, you know, um, growth or whatever and whatever revenue. Um, so, you know, and I, I just, that's another thing. Like now I try not to really focus on that stuff as much as, as long as I'm getting a doll that I want and a, you know, that's all that I try to focus on for the most part. Now I don't like if somebody take a sold out edition and open it up and do another edition after, you know, it was a sold edition. Um, but otherwise I try not to focus on that because, you know, at the end of the day, depending on what artists you buy from, your baby is going to be unique or different and special in its own way. Um, some artists, they do tend to, oh, not going to get into that. That's, that's too much, but yeah, so, um, that's it. Um, I, let's see when I'm, yeah. I did kind of look for limited edition uh, sculpts too back when I first started collecting. I really pretty much wanted mostly limited edition kits when I think about it. Or, you know, ones that was going to sell out or, you know, smaller editions. But I don't worry about that stuff anymore. So that has changed too. But anyway, this has been a very long video. I hope that you guys are subscribed and that you click the bell to be a part of the notification squad. And I would love for you guys to join the Chatterbox. It is $4.99. You do have to be at least 18 years old to join. There is exclusive, con exclusive content in there. And a lot of times the Chatterbox is the first to know what's coming up for sale, what's going on with me. Um, and, you know, the, the live streams and all that jazz. But, yeah, if you're looking for more topic videos that's where it'll probably be at and um that's all i got <laughs> thanks guys bye bye